Hi, I'm Silvia Tedesco and I'm a member of the Waste Resource Innovation Network at Manchester Met. Hi, I'm Robert Crabnell and I'm a technical specialist here at Print City working on Transform CE. Hi, I'm Alice Peters and I'm Deputy Director of Chemical Engineering at Newcastle University. And we are the researchers behind Build a Bear 2.0, an ingenious project funded by the Royal Academy of Engineering. What is 40 years old but still looks brand new? Well, you might not expect it, but that's actually 3D printing, which was invented in the 1980s. And now the price has rapidly dropped of 3D printing. A lot of people actually have a 3D printer at home. But what has been really exciting is that we're no longer limited to printing of plastic. We can print materials such as wood, rubber, metals, and even organs. In this project, Build a Bear 2.0, I'm going to show you how you can make your own designs. For instance, a Pokemon, a castle, or your own teddy bear using 3D printing. 3D printing works by initially drawing out your design in a computer-aided design software. In our Build a Bear project, as you can see on the screen, we have designed a teddy bear which can be printed at home. The size of this bear can then be altered in your computer-aided design software, saved as an SDL file, and then transferred into software designed specifically for each 3D printer. In this software, you can tell the 3D printer what material you are going to print your object out of, how many layers you want, and what resolution you want it to be. You can then slice this object, which tells the 3D printer exactly what layers it is going to print, and export this as a G-code. The 3D printing software can also tell you how much material is going to be used, how much each print is going to cost, and how long each print will take to print. The most popular 3D printing technique for home printers is fused filament fabrication, or FFF for short. And this works through a thermoplastic filament being fed into an extruder, heated up, and then printed out of a nozzle controlled by the 3D printer. The printer then produces the design that you have made on the computer in a layer by layer fashion. Another popular method is stereolithography. This works by lowering a build plate into a UV resin tank and then UV light polymerizing the object that you've made on your computer. What has been particularly exciting is that we can print really fine details. Look at this little castle and see all the details that you can get. So look at the windows, the sharp peaks, all the corners. A few years ago this really wasn't possible and this is how far 3D printing has come in the last couple of years. Would you want to live in a house that's been 3D printed? Nowadays you can even build large structures, such as whole buildings, via 3D printing of concrete. You can see here this example in the Netherlands, which had the first house that was made out of 3D printing. And in Dubai, they said that by 2030, 25% of all buildings should be 3D printed. But also we can use a lot of other materials. For instance, researchers at the University of Vienna did 3D printing of dentin, which is similar to ivory. So here you have the ivory itself and the 3D printed material. Would you be able to tell the difference? The biggest challenge that we might have is 3D printing of organs. And that's for two different reasons. First of all, because you're working with soft material. And the second, because the precision of it needs to be really high. Because in order for your blood vessels to go through, we need to be printing very, very small materials, which are only millimeter sized. And in this picture, you can see a 3D printed lung. Despite the fact that it's been 3D printed, you can nicely see all the blood vessels that are going into it. So hopefully this video has inspired you to make some 3D printing designs of your own. So if you want to do 3D printing with us and 3D printing with mace material, you can come to the Life Science Centre in Newcastle, where you can actually make your own material.